Have you ever wondered why some receive healing almost instantly, while others seem to wait endlessly, even when both have faith? Does God's word truly promise healing for everyone, or are there exceptions to this divine rule? My friends, what if I told you that your healing is more than a possibility? It's a divine promise waiting to be claimed. Today, we will go into the depths of the scriptures to uncover how God desires for you to live in health and wellness. Through this exploration, you will find out how you can tap into divine healing, which will allow you to experience unparalleled wholeness in every area of your life. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. According to Psalm 103 verses 2 to 3, David passionately declares, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? David doesn't just stop at praising God. He reminds himself, and he also reminds us, of the benefits that come with a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And what are these benefits? They are blessings of healing, redemption, love, and compassion. Isn't it marvelous that God's package of salvation is not merely spiritual, but also physical? My friends, let's look into seven dimensions of how God not only wants to heal your spirit, but also your complete well-being in body and soul. Number one, healing is your inheritance. Isaiah 53 verse 5 states, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The sacrificial act of Jesus on the cross was not just about providing a path to heaven. It was about complete restoration, body, soul, and spirit. When the Israelites were departing Egypt, they found themselves at Marah, a place of bitter waters. After Moses threw a specific tree into the waters at God's direction, they became sweet. This tree signifies the cross, and the sweetened waters symbolize the healing that flows from it. It serves as a physical representation of a spiritual reality. God was signaling from the onset that healing is essential to His covenant with His people. Sometimes we have the tendency to spiritualize healing, making it solely about moral or spiritual wellness. While those are essential, let's not forget that God cared enough about our physical bodies to include them in the redemption package. The healing of the man at the pool of Bethesda, as detailed in John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 15, is an eye-opening illustration of God's comprehensive care for us. In this passage, Jesus asks the man, Do you want to be made well? And upon his affirmative reply, Jesus commands, Rise! Take up your bed and walk. This profound interaction serves as a vivid reminder that God is not only concerned with our spiritual well-being, but also deeply invested in our physical health. The term inheritance often implies something that is handed down from one generation to another. Healing is our spiritual inheritance. It is accessible to every believer in Christ. It's not something you earn. It's something you receive by faith. God is not a God of partiality. What he has done for one, he will do for another. Take, for example, Naaman the Syrian. He was not an Israelite, yet God healed him of his leprosy, showing that healing is not limited by ethnicity or religious affiliation. The grace of healing is available to all. Number two, the nature of God is to heal. When Moses asked God to reveal himself, God said in Exodus 34, verse 6, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, 
long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth. My friends, understand this. It's in God's nature to heal. It is a part of his character. In 1 Kings 17, we encounter the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. When her son fell seriously ill and died, God didn't blame her or say it was his will. Elijah prayed and the boy was restored to life. The nature of God was demonstrated in that situation. He is a restorer of life and health. God's name Jehovah Rapha literally means the Lord who heals. When God led the Israelites through the wilderness and they were without water, he didn't just provide water. He also declared himself as Jehovah Rapha. He was making it clear. Healing is not just something he does. It's who he is. So even in the Old Testament, before the cross, God was actively involved in the healing ministry. God made this powerful proclamation to the Israelites by introducing himself as Jehovah Rapha in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, stating, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Consider that this name is not just a title, but a promise of his nature and character. Have you ever pondered why Jesus healed on the Sabbath, a day considered sacred and set apart for rest? By healing on this day, Jesus was making a profound statement about the very character of God. He was saying that God doesn't take breaks from being good. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. So whether it's a Sabbath or any other day, God is always in the business of healing. However, understanding God's nature as healer also involves recognizing His sovereignty. While God's desire is to heal, the ways and timings can differ. Just like Paul's thorn in the flesh was not removed despite his prayers, yet God's grace was sufficient for him. His nature remains the same. He is a God who heals. Number 3. Prayer as a Gateway to Healing James 5 verses 14 to 16 admonishes us. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. Prayer is not just an act. It's a gateway a point of contact between humanity and divinity. Consider the story of Hezekiah, faced with a terminal illness. He turned his face to the wall and prayed. God not only healed him, but added 15 years to his life. What's remarkable is that God changed his own decree in response to Hezekiah's prayers. This demonstrates the power of prayer, to not only ask but receive healing from God. Friends, Let's not underestimate the prayer of faith. When Peter and John encountered a man lame from birth at the temple gates, they didn't offer him silver or gold. What they offered was far more valuable, a prayer of faith that resulted in instant healing. This wasn't a gradual process. The man began to walk immediately. Sometimes, all that stands between you and your healing is a prayer of faith. In the same way, we should also consider the community aspect of prayer. James advises not just to pray, but to confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another, that you may be healed. This introduces the idea of collective faith. Sometimes, friends of faith can carry you when your own faith is faltering. Look at the paralyzed man whose friends lowered him through the roof to get him to Jesus. It wasn't just his faith, but the collective faith of his friends that facilitated his healing. But let's not forget that prayer is not a formula. It's a relationship. When the disciples could not heal the boy with epilepsy, 
Jesus revealed that certain kinds come out only through prayer and fasting. In other words, the effectiveness of our prayers is closely linked to the depth of our relationship with God. A deep relationship with God can unlock dimensions of healing that are otherwise unreachable. Number 4. Divine Healing and Human Responsibility Jesus clearly stated in Matthew 9, verse 29, According to your faith, let it be to you, while God is the ultimate source of healing. There's a part we play in activating that healing. Faith. Without faith, even the most powerful prayers might not bear fruit. But what does this mean? Take the woman with the issue of blood. She had spent all she had on physicians and was no better. But the moment she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she was made whole. Jesus didn't say, My power has made you whole. He said, Your faith has made you well. This woman's faith pulled the healing virtue out of Jesus. Even when Jesus healed the blind man at Bethsaida, he used saliva and mud. Why? He was teaching us that sometimes healing may require an action, however unconventional it may seem. He didn't just say, be healed. He involved the blind man in his own healing process. We have a role to play in our healing. It's also important to understand that our actions can sometimes serve as hindrances to our healing. Sin, unbelief, or holding on to unforgiveness can act as barriers. In John 5, Jesus healed a man at the pool of Bethesda, but later warned him, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Our lifestyle choices can sometimes be the very thing standing in the way of our healing. Moreover, it's crucial to realize that sometimes doctors can work alongside faith. Luke, one of the disciples, was a physician. God's healing can sometimes come through the skillful hands of doctors and other means. Faith is not an abandonment of reason, but its fulfillment. Faith and human responsibility are not separate entities. They work together like two sides of the same coin. Number 5. Healing as a Testimony Revelation 12 verse 11 enlightens us, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. One of the most overlooked aspects of healing is that it serves as a testimony to God's goodness, a testament to His eternal love and infinite power. The healing of the man born blind in John 9 didn't just restore his physical sight. It also opened the eyes of those who witnessed the miracle. His healing became a topic of debate among the Pharisees, eventually leading to a confession of faith from his parents. When God heals you, He's not just restoring you physically, but He's also setting a stage to reveal Himself to others through you. Consider the healing of the ten lepers. Only one returned to give thanks and glorify God. Jesus told him, Your faith has made you well. While all ten were physically healed, only the one who returned received spiritual wholeness. His testimony wasn't just for him. It was to lead others into a revelation of who God is. The man at the pool of Bethesda had been sick for 38 years. Imagine the stories that would have been crafted around his condition. Yet when he was healed, he became a walking, talking testimony. Healing has ripple effects that go beyond the individual. It affects communities and even nations. Think of Naaman whose healing altered the perception of God in the Syrian nation. And let's not forget, your healing can serve as faith fuel for someone else who is believing God for a miracle. When the woman with the issue of blood was healed, it was in a crowd. Many in that crowd would have been struggling with their own conditions. Imagine the surge of faith that would have rushed through them at witnessing her healing. Healing is not selfish. It's a shared experience. It's an evangelistic tool in the hands of the Almighty, serving dual purposes. 
It restores the individual and glorifies God within a community. The testimony of your healing is a weapon in spiritual warfare, a beacon of hope to the hopeless and proof of God's compassion and power. Number six, the importance of remaining in God's word for your healing. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, according to John 8, verses 31 to 32. Truth here is not merely an intellectual agreement with a set of facts. It is a transformative revelation that leads to freedom, including freedom from sickness. Let's look again at the life of Job. This man lost everything. His family, his health, his wealth, yet, he never lost his integrity or his faith in God. When Job's friends came to him with all sorts of explanations as to why he was suffering, Job remained steadfast in his understanding of God's word. His affirmation, I know that my Redeemer lives, is a testament to this. Eventually, God restored him, doubling what he had lost. His life stands as a testimony to the importance of staying rooted in the word even when circumstances scream otherwise. It's not enough to know isolated scriptures on healing. One must absorb the word. Let it dwell richly within. Meditate on it day and night. Remember Joshua 1 verse 8, which promises that meditating on the word leads to good success. Healing often comes as we align ourselves with the truth of God's word. The word is alive and active sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4 verse 12 doesn't just describe a historical document. It describes a living entity capable of diving into the joints and marrow and other physical parts of our bodies. This is no metaphor. The word can penetrate the very cells of our body, aligning them with divine health. Similarly, God's word isn't merely ink on paper, but spirit and life as indicated in John 6, verse 63. When you speak God's word over your life, you're not just uttering syllables, but releasing spiritual power. The centurion understood this. He told Jesus, Speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. He realized that Jesus' words carried authority and power, and his servant was healed at that very moment. It's not just about having God's word in your library. It's about having it in your heart. It must be personalized, internalized, and actualized. The word of God should be your daily bread, your living water. It is not just information, but transformation. But more the word dwells in you, the more it pushes out every form of sickness, aligning your body with God's perfect will for health. And number seven, healing for the soul. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus beckons us in Matthew 11, verse 28. Often we are quick to seek physical healing while neglecting the wellness of our souls. But Jesus is offering a type of healing that is holistic, body, mind, and soul. Remember the story of Mary and Martha. Mary chose the better part, which was sitting at Jesus' feet. Sometimes our bodies may be healed, but our souls are still languishing in unrest. The healing that Jesus offers us is all-encompassing. It goes beyond physical ailments to touch the very core of our being. Think about King Saul. He had an evil spirit tormenting him, and the only temporary relief he found was when David played his harp. His problem wasn't physical, it was in his soul. No amount of physical healing could have helped him. We sometimes overlook the need for our souls to be in a state of peace and rest. Yet this is critical for overall wellness. The soul is the seat of your emotions. 
your will, and your intellect. When it's not well, it can affect your body. Proverbs 17 verse 22 says, A merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Emotional stress, unforgiveness, bitterness. These are all diseases of the soul that can manifest as physical ailments. Sometimes healing begins when we get our soul right. Remember, again, the paralyzed man whose friends lowered him through the roof to get to Jesus. Before Jesus addressed his physical condition, he first said, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Jesus knew that for genuine and lasting healing to take place, the soul needed to be attended to first. So, what is the condition of your soul today? Are you laboring and heavy laden, burdened by the cares of this world? Jesus offers a type of rest that no spa, no vacation, no amount of sleep can give. A rest that begins in the soul and flows outward to affect every cell in your body. It's a divine type of wellness that only He can provide. Today, I want to share with you not just scriptural insights, but also some valuable healing nuggets that I've learned over time. One of the most important changes you can make is in the way you talk about sickness. My friends, never claim a sickness as your own by saying, I have this or I have that, or my this or my that. You don't claim sickness, you claim healing. The disease does not belong to you. Neither does it belong to your friends or your loved ones. So stop saying that they have this or they have that. Instead, phrase it as an attack. You may say you or someone you know is being attacked by flu or whatever the illness may be. Or you may say you're having challenges with a particular health issue. Also make it clear to those around you that you reject the notion of owning the sickness. Don't allow anyone to speak negative health conditions over your life or the lives of your loved ones by making declarations like you will have this or you will have that. Instead, reject such statements and avoid agreeing with them. Stand firm in your faith and in the power of positive confessions. Also, don't give in to the notion of generational or hereditary diseases. If someone tells you, your mother had this condition or your grandfather had that, so you're likely to get it too, reject it immediately. Do not accept that as your fate. You are not bound by the health struggles or conditions of your family's past. Reject any form of generational curse, including sickness, Stand in faith declaring that you are a new creation in Christ and the old generational curses have no hold on you. God's promise of healing and wholeness is for you, regardless of your family history. Now, after you've prayed in faith, if symptoms persist, don't lose heart. Continue to pray and affirm your healing. Speak blessings over your body, for instance, you might say, my kidneys are blessed, in the name of Jesus. Make positive affirmations like this over any part of your body that is under attack. Look at yourself in the mirror and boldly declare, I am healed in the name of Jesus. Reject any suggestion from the enemy that tries to convince you otherwise. If your healing has not yet fully manifested, it's okay to tell people that you are in the process of recovering. Be transparent, but maintain your stand. That full healing is on the way. Moreover, be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit concerning your healing. You'd be surprised to know that He is guiding you in the smallest details. I recall being under attack from a particular stomach bacteria years ago. The doctors had a different diagnosis, but led by the Holy Spirit, I asked for a specific blood test. Though reluctant, the doctor agreed, and the test confirmed what the Spirit had revealed to me. Consequently, 
I received the correct treatment and today, praise God, I'm fully healed. Friends, what God did for me and countless others, he can do for you. Keep your faith strong, your confessions positive, and your ear tuned to the voice of the Holy Spirit. God is not just able, he is willing. God is faithful, and his desire is for your complete healing and well-being. Also, just as you would take prescribed medicine on a regular schedule to treat physical ailments, I urge you to take the scripture as your spiritual medicine. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 20 to 22 tells us, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So if you're dealing with symptoms, don't hesitate to read a healing scripture or read a set of healing scriptures three times a day or as often as you feel the symptoms manifest. Every time you feel weak or overwhelmed, take a moment to ingest your scriptural medicine. Let the power of God's word sink deep into your spirit, rejuvenating your faith and strengthening your resolve to stand against the attack on your body. This is not merely a poetic idea. It's a practical, powerful application of your faith in action. You're not just reading words. You're applying the life-giving, healing power of God's word to your situation. So hold tight to your faith and let the scripture be the medicine that brings you back to health. My friends, let us remember Psalm 103, where David reminds us not to forget that our God is a healing God. He heals all our diseases, renews our strength, and even redeems our lives from destruction. Healing is your birthright as a child of God, but it's up to you to lay claim to it. Have faith. God wants you healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus and start thanking God for your healing right now because gratitude itself is a form of faith in action. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and merciful God. Abba Father, who is in heaven, I praise your holy name and I give you all the glory. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. I come before your throne of grace and mercy, acknowledging that you are the almighty God, the great physician. You are Jehovah Rapha, the healer of all our diseases. Lord, your majesty and goodness are beyond human understanding, and I worship you for who you are. Father, forgive me for the times I have sinned against you and against others. Gracious Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I let go of all resentment and bitterness, both known and unknown, and I renounce anything that may be a snare to my soul. As you forgive me, Lord, I also release forgiveness to those who have wronged me. Deliver me from all evil, from all sickness and disease, from all plans of the enemy. I declare in the name of Jesus that your healing virtue is flowing through every part of my being right now, body, mind, and soul. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity, every form of illness, every disease, every malfunction in my body in the mighty name of Jesus. I renounce every form of generational curse and diseases and declare that I am free from any hereditary illnesses that try to bind me. I reject every negative word spoken over my life and over my health in the name of Jesus. Father, 
I ask that you saturate me with your holy presence so profoundly that every cell, every organ, and every tissue comes into alignment with your divine health. May every muscle, every system, every joint, and every bone be touched by your healing power. Lord, I claim your words in Psalm 30, verse 4, which says, O Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. I declare that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Father, I pray for a strengthening of my faith, that I may always trust in your divine power and everlasting love. Lord, I ask that you fill me with the kind of faith that moves mountains and the faith that overcomes every obstacle in my path to healing and wholeness. Father, may your blessings overflow in every area of my life. I pray for your protection to surround me and my loved ones as a shield, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Father God, I lift up my loved ones to you. I pray that they would experience your love, grace, and healing in a powerful way. May their eyes be open to see you, their ears opened to hear your voice, and their hearts softened to accept your gift of eternal life. Lord, let your healing extend beyond the physical and touch the very core of our souls. Heavenly Father, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I thank you for every heart that is opening before you at this moment. For those of us who are struggling with discomfort and illnesses, Lord, may you heal us and renew our strength. Lord, we ask that you lay your healing hands upon us and bring comfort to us through your Holy Spirit. May you grant us hope to see beyond our current circumstances. Father God, we ask that you deliver us from pain and weakness and sustain us by your grace so that our strength and courage do not fail. Lord, for those experiencing mental torment, emotional wounds, and for those who are brokenhearted, may you heal every invisible pain and soothe every wounded soul with the healing power of your love. In the name of Jesus, we claim healing over negative thoughts, anger, addictions, self-pity, depression, anxiety, PTSD, and a host of other mental and emotional disorders. Father, may you bring peace and calm to our hearts and minds, and may our thoughts be led by your truth. Lord, for those of us whose faith is wavering, we ask that you increase our faith as we put our trust in you. For those who are burdened in our souls, may you give us rest and peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we ask that you give us a testimony to share with others, and may your healing power manifest in our lives for your glory. Father, give us a testimony of healing and restoration. Thank you, Lord, for healing us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. In the name of Jesus, we declare that no weapon formed against us or against our health shall prosper. We bind every force that comes against our health and well-being. Father God, we are grateful that with you all things are possible and that you still perform miracles today. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word Amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member, 
who you know needs the blessing of this prayer, and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.